Welcome to the Flourishing Founders Podcast, where I interview inspiring Canadian entrepreneurs about the highs and lows of taking the leap of faith and starting their own business. My name is Ashley Deering. I'm the owner of Deering Media, a Fredericton, New Brunswick-based digital marketing agency. Let's jump into the episode. Welcome back to the live recording of the Flourishing Founders Podcast. I'm your host, Ashley Deering, the CEO of Deering Media, a social media marketing agency based here in Fredericton, New Brunswick. The Flourishing Founders Podcast dives deep into the lives of Atlantic Canadian entrepreneurs, finding out what drives them towards their passions and how they've managed to build their empires. So today on the podcast, we have our guest, Sarah Mackey. Sarah Mackey is a master's trained social worker, a clinical therapist, a certified clinical trauma professional, and the director of her private practice in downtown Fredericton called Conscious Counseling and Wellness. Sarah has a passion for trauma-informed care, neuroscience, and a mind-body approach to mental health and wellness, which we'll totally dive into today. On top of being a new small business owner, Sarah spends her days treating her clients for trauma, eating disorders, depression, anxiety, and relational issues. In addition to counseling therapy, Sarah's practice also offers mental health occupational therapy, parent coaching, holistic nutrition, Reiki, and yoga. So thank you so much, Sarah. We're going to let her in right now. Let's get started. I met Sarah for the first time at was formerly Jungle House Dance, which is now the Movement Vault. Hey, Sarah. Hello. Welcome, beautiful. I was just going to say, I met you for the first So my first impression of you is literally burned into my mind. So you know, listen to this. <laughs> when I first met you, I went into my first class at Jungle House at the time, which is now the Movement Vault. And I didn't know you from a hole in the wall, but you were the first person to run up to me smile full of energy and just greeted me into the space and made me feel so welcome and it's just such a true testament to who you are as a person you're such a bubbly lovely person and it's really why I wanted to have you on here I think your entrepreneurial journey is really inspirational I think a lot of people will get something out of this today but also just who you are as a person is just so joyful so uh, thank you for doing this today I'm so happy to have you here Oh, thank you so much. That's like the best intro I've ever had. <laughs> also, I've never seen you at the Movement Ball, actually, in previously Jungle House, and being like, oh, new person. Like, she looks really pretty and cool. <laughs> But you know what? It's such an intimidating space and thing to go in and do, right? And it was like a heels class too. That was so out of my comfort zone. So to have somebody that was just so welcoming into that <laughs> click almost or that group, it was just so nice. And it's something like that was like three years ago. Like I remember you from yeah. that moment. Oh, so good. Glad that we <laughs> yeah. <did> that. <laughs> Yeah, so that's a little bit about how I know you and how, why I think you're so sweet. But let's dive into your business, who you are, your passions. You're such an incredible person. I'm excited. So I want to start at the beginning of your journey, Sarah. What sparked your interest into wellness and, you know, social work eventually? Like, how did that begin for you? Yeah, that's a wonderful question. So I think I always, from the time I was a little girl, had a broad interest in like counseling, psychotherapy, psychology, and that kind of like, I want to help people one on one, I feel like I can connect with people, I feel like I've always empathized with, I guess, people going through hardships. So that was like the core foundation. Um, but growing up and going to university, when I went to Mount A, I started my degree with a major in psychology. But I ended up stacking on a sociology major to it because I fell in love with this, I guess, like expanded knowledge of how systems and how culture and society is impacting mental health and why we can't just look at mental health through a vacuum of just your brain is broken. Yeah. So that kind of led me into social work. Um, and I wanted to do what I always wanted to do, like do the one-on-one -on -one therapy and do some kind of business that way, but with that extended lens, I guess. That's so beautiful. And you, and this is too personal, we can always skip things, but did you yourself no, no, struggle no. with mental or was it, was it mental illnesses for you growing up or was it, you know, you were always the go-to like shoulder to cry on for your friends? Like, what was that for you? 
Yeah, I honestly both. <laughs> Fair um, same. <laughs> yeah, definitely like a friend of everyone, shoulder to cry on growing up. But I have also always struggled with my own body image and my own anxiety and depression. Like I've personally been on antidepressants since I was 16 and still to this day. And I guess I would consider myself as someone who was born as a highly sensitive person. So every kind of um, emotion or situation that I'm part of, I feel like I might feel it more intensely than you know, someone who's neurotypical, for example. Um, so throughout my life, I had this experience, this body image experience, which eventually did develop into several eating disorders, which were a big thing for me to heal from. Um, and something that really compounded my mental health journey was going through a few traumas in my young teenage to young adulthood that really had a stacking effect and led to me having to honestly like take a break from my social work career and yeah I think a lot of that for me is super motivating to why I do what I do just because there were lots of days where I felt like hey you know like I'm sort of at the end of the rope here you know life has been decent but I'll probably have to live with this level of PTSD for ever this level of eating disorder forever and like maybe that's fine but then realize there's so many tools that I found that I've now integrated into my clinic uh that have made me like kind of have a freer life um so yeah I think that's all uh definitely compounded my reason to make my clinic <laughs> I love that though because you're not there you know talking out of your ass when you're with your clients and stuff like that you're talking from experience you're talking from things trial and error things that you've gone through you're able to relate with them on such a profound level like that's so beautiful Sarah that you've been able to you know take that trauma and take those bad experiences and mold it and shape it into something where you're able to now help people that are going through those things like that it's just so beautiful and inspirational wow yeah. Oh, uh, thank you, Ashley. I do think that it definitely helps for, like, for folks who have been through trauma, you're really, really hypersensitive to different cues on people's face. You're hypersensitive to, like, tones and everything like that. So when the therapist says something like, I understand or I know what you mean, I feel like maybe there's a little bit of, like, an authenticity check that can go off with me because I do know but I also always say, like, your journey is going to be vastly different from mine. Like, I don't know your journey. Yeah, I love that. Like, I, I've experienced pain, and I can relate to you on that sense, but your journey is still your own, and I'm here to be there for it. Oh, my God, you're so beautiful. Oh, my gosh, that's lovely. <laughs> <laughs> My next question was, did you always see a vision of owning your own practice someday? So you kind of knew you wanted to be in this field and stuff, but like, was the dream, like, I'm going to have my own practice or did you just know that you wanted to get into this kind of work? Yeah, a great question too. So I did not envision, I shouldn't have heard it like that. I was going to say really anything. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't envision a private practice from the get go. No. What I had envisioned was myself in a career doing one-on-one -on -one therapy and doing advocacy and social justice work on the side. Um, but I started conscious counseling and wellness just with the intention of leading like a very quiet life, going into my practice. And then I had my first student, Ashley Ho, uh, who now works for me. And I don't know, I loved, like it was so addicting to have that collaboration with Staff. And I now that I'm saying this, I think part of me maybe had a distant dream of a private practice with a multidisciplinary team. And so far as I've always found it awesome, like a great idea, but didn't think it was something I could do. Um, <laughs> just one second, actually. <laughs> yeah, no problem. Sorry, I just had to blow my nose. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> but I think like as I got my student and as I started working collaboratively myself, I kind of had this thought like, well, why not me? Like, why, why can I do something I find really cool? So we slowly started bringing on different staff. Like my sister is an occupational therapist and that just made it better. And then we kind of allowed ourselves to get more creative and I had to allow myself to expand my vision. 
So I guess like the vision of CCW happened at the start of last year, and we've been working kind of like mindfully of what I've made up at that time, but it wasn't always the vision. That's so incredible. But you know what? That's just you trusting yourself and trusting your passions and taking one little step and then it just keeps snowballing, right? Like when you started, it was just you and you thought it was just going to be this quiet little thing. And now like there's yoga and so many, we'll get into that too, but there's so many incredible things that you've expanded and incorporated amazing people you've brought in too, which is so cool. So what pushed you to starting at your own practice? So how, tell me the story of how conscious wellness, like how did this become what it is today? Yeah, absolutely. So um, I did my social work degrees. Well, I did my undergrads and I did my two social work degrees. Then I got some practice in the field working at Liberty Lane, which is an organization for domestic violence and helping women um, and children. And then I worked uh, briefly at another private practice in the city called Haven for Hope Counseling Center. Awesome. Um, so I worked there, but first I was their student. And that was an amazing experience at like working on a collaborative team and working um, I, I guess just with other therapists and in a private practice setting because my work before that had been all in the nonprofit sector. Um, so that was amazing. But partly through that is when I, and I'm going to get a little vulnerable here, so maybe trigger warning, but I won't go into details. Um, partly during my work at Haven for Hope, I had to go off work due to my own PTSD. So with taking, like, I think it was five or six months off, I had a ton of time to think. I had a ton of time to kind of envision what I wanted and came to this realization that I really do do a lot of my best work kind of in a self-directed way. Um, and I kind of decided I wanted to go it on my own a little bit with a specific trauma-informed lens based on what I had just been through and the tools that had helped me. Wow. Um, so I kind of wanted to open Conscious Counseling and Wellness and do this thing where I'm doing therapy from a lens that addresses our nervous system, that collaborates in the community with other trauma-informed professionals, but didn't picture it like happening in my clinic yet. Uh, so I just decided to go for it. I found a grant in New Brunswick that would help me start out a little bit. And yeah, I just figured why not? I feel like after you go through something like that, sometimes like you feel like you're at your low, low, low. So like anything coming up can really just be like, why not? <laughs> yeah. And again, that snowball effect, right? Like that was you taking yourself out of your low, taking a step towards your passion and like, look at where you're at now. Like that's unreal. Congratulations. That's really beautiful. Oh, yeah, and <laughs> there's such a need for, you know, mental health services and stuff within New Brunswick. Like, did you find that there was a niche for specific like trauma based therapy here? Absolutely. Yes. And I will add kind of a disclaimer where like I when I say these things I never want to bash other clinics because no. each clinic in New Brunswick or in our city of Fredericton has their own niche and kind of what they're known for and I love that um, but where I got really excited was I found there wasn't really much aside from like the biofeedback and neurofeedback clinics that took a holistic trauma lens um, so I definitely wanted to do that and also there's not much in the city that is specifically eating disorder educated as well mm -hmm. yeah. and are you finding like I, I don't know how necessarily it works but are you guys like fully booked like do you have a full roster of clients for each therapist I suppose yes yeah we do so we we got fully booked fairly quickly and also like booked with a wait list which when you're looking in like the build your private practice world, um, they normally do say like a clinician can take up to six months to get booked. But I think we can really attribute the fact that our clinicians got booked so quickly to the fact that there's such a need in 
all communities for trauma-informed care. And they're great clinicians. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and they were well known too. I know one of the people that you brought in was uh, Irene for yoga. And I've never yeah. even met Irene personally, but I've heard so many amazing things about her from so many different people. So they already had, yeah. you know, great reputations coming into the clinic as well. So you really have surrounded yourself with some great people. Oh, absolutely. And shout out to Irene. She is amazing. <laughs> Did you run into any roadblocks on this journey of, you know, starting it, finding the location, establishing it and stuff like that, but then also growing and finding the right people to have around you? Yeah, absolutely. I would say, like, there was my first year in practice just as myself at Conscious Counseling and Wellness. And in my mind, I was like, this is the roadblock year. Like, this is where we figure out how to do everything. By the end of it, I was feeling really in the practice of owning my own business. And then 2021, I decided to expand. And I was like, okay, this is the roadblock year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And just in terms of that, like, it, it's never been anything too much per se but when you are a total beginner at business I feel like everything feels like a roadblock <laughs> well you have to wear so many different hats right like you have a master's in social work not accounting or whatever it may be right that's like being thrown at you like it's always like crazy like plethora of things you have to try to just figure out and... oh my god absolutely so the best things I did for everything I considered a roadblock was I brought in a business coach from this company called build your private practice for a little Marsh. bit Yes, I had like my um, kind of mentors with the grant program I did at first and my accountant, Michael Briggs. <laughs> 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 yeah, and honestly, like the biggest roadblock that has continued for me is understanding finances. And I do reading on that and I try to take it in, but it's exactly what you said, like, I'm a trained social worker. <laughs> well, that's it, right? We all specialize in our own things, and that's what we've built our businesses around. But it's knowing, like, when to bring in the right people around you and to have help and outsource what you don't want to do or what's draining all your time so you can build more things. And, like, it's just having the right people around and the right strategies and stuff. Absolutely. And I think where the financial literacy for me has been such a roadblock to me just like enjoying my life and enjoying my practice, that's exactly what I had to do. I brought in um, a gal from oh, what is it? Keep It Balanced Bookkeeping. <laughs> yes! <laughs> <For> good! My... <laughs> <laughs> Shout outs. <laughs> I see Allison jumped in our chat here. Hi, Allison. She's coming on the podcast next month. And she's super sweet as well. I know. I'm like coaching all these like really lovely people. I'm like, come tell me about your life. So I'm excited awesome. for that. Oh, okay. Hi, so we touched on this a little bit, but I'm going to dive into it a little bit more. And if you're not comfortable, for the love of God, we'll skip. You let me know. So your practice specializes in subjects such as trauma and eating disorder, recovery. Why are these subjects so near and dear to your heart? And we did talk about how, you know, there's not necessarily these resources in Fredericton. But for you personally, what makes you the right person to have a practice that's, you know, focused around these subjects? Yeah, so great question for both. And maybe the eating disorder piece and the trauma piece kind of come from somewhere different for me, but they certainly overlap. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess those are important to me just where when I was experiencing an eating disorder and when I was experiencing trauma, I was able to find a lot of resources that were kind of brain-based. So like change your thoughts and you'll change your symptoms and that, that kind of characteristic of a therapy called cognitive behavioral therapy. I totally practice that. I totally appreciate what that therapy has to give. However, I found that I wasn't necessarily making progress just with like brain-based, top-down cognitive therapies. Mm -hmm. So yeah, during both my eating disorder journey personally and during both my trauma journey personally and those of the people that I know really well, um, the tools that I found super helpful for me were tools that reconnected me to my body and allowed me to work through how that was so overwhelming and get back in there. 
So like massage, comment for massage, like yoga, and talk therapy that addressed my nervous system. So once I kind of got my hands on the nervous system dialed talk therapies, which those are called like somatic therapies, sensory motor therapies, I took a bunch of trainings. I became a clinical certified trauma professional. I like got a few books that specified in that approach for eating disorders. Um, and I don't know, I just find it very valuable. And I think maybe that's a bit unique to Fredericton. So yeah, I tried to bring that into the community. I love that. I love that you found not only like a niche in the market, like a hole in the market that you could come in and fill, but the fact that it comes from your own journey, like that's just so like profound and beautiful. Like you're probably really impacting and changing, you know, the lives of people that come in and see you. That's beautiful. It, it, it definitely comes from my own journey and the journeys of like my clients that I see every day and tell me what works, what doesn't for them. Yeah, because that's part of it too as a business owner, you know, putting the therapy side of it apart. Like as a business owner, you're always trying to evolve and serve, you know, your client bases, uh, their needs and their pain points and stuff like that. So the fact that you're able to adjust and everything and the fact that it's still their journey. It's like, yes, I've been through my own stuff and I can, you know, relate to you on the sense of pain and everything, but it's completely yours and I'm here for you and like that's just that's 100%. that's and, what we need like, that's another point too like my niche of being bottom up and working with the nervous systems and therapy actually probably doesn't work as much for everybody's brain and just how they've been raised and how their neurobiology is so I do definitely take that feedback in my sessions and jump back into a cognitive approach when I need to. As yeah. Well. And that's what I like about what you said too, about, you know, not bashing the other, you know, councils and practices that are here. Everybody's just specializing in what they've been able to learn and what they see the results in and stuff like that. So really? it's kind of up to you as somebody who's looking for help to kind of try a couple of different places and find, you know, what's working right for you, which is, I think it's fantastic to offer another solution. Yeah, totally. And up to the practitioner to explain their approaches and give the client almost like a trial run to. Yeah, I like that. We need to like <laughs> normalize that more. I think going to therapy and stuff can be scary. But if you almost like, okay. if you almost sell it as it's like a speed date to see if like my type of therapy is right for you or my ways <laughs> yeah. and everything. Like, I like that. <laughs> totally. Yeah, we offer a 15 minute consultation for everyone for free too. So I think that's kind of that concept like speed therapist <laughs> <laughs> that's what i call my discovery calls i'm like it's a speed date <laughs> i'm like let's see if we jive if the way i work works right for you and like if it's a match it's a match great like same thing right <laughs> exactly um can you speak more to the other services and why you've added them to the rosters the teachers that you have like what do you guys offer overall give me a little rundown yeah, absolutely. And I'm so excited to talk about this. Um, <laughs> so we offer our first service that we branched out to was trauma informed yoga and yin yoga with Irene. That's on a bit of a pause right now due to just like the closures um, and the lockdown. So that's to be visited again. But I think that incorporated the movement piece into our practice so beautifully. Um, we also offer uh, parent coaching as well as occupational therapy for children, and that's a service that my sister does. Um, she works with us for her one-on-one -on -one clients, and she also has her own side business where she kind of founded her own program. So yeah, I, I'm doing a lot of shout outs, but if you want to check her out, it's Cindy Mackie OT. <laughs> I love this. I love this. We so hype up people around here. A hundred percent. Other services we have are Reiki from our therapist, Anna. So she's a clinical therapist. And then another hat she wears is a Reiki practitioner. So that's like um, an energy healing and kind of like a nervous regulating healing modality um, and she's amazing we also offer nutrition quite newly from our um, oh, one sec <laughs> my cat keeps kind of getting into something <laughs> <It's okay. laughs> um, every once in a while I've got to swat her away but our nutrition is from our new practitioner called Ali Watson uh, and that's like a mental health informed nutrition so Certainly, we can work on body-based concerns, but it's very much kind of 
a practice to improve mental health and wellness overall through what people are eating. I love that. Yeah, I think that was everything. Um, <laughs> That's everyone on your list. <laughs> yeah, my, my disclaimer, I, I'm like loving the word disclaimer today, is that I do personally newly have an ADHD diagnosis, which has made my whole life make sense. So if I'm just straight <laughs> up forgetting something, I mean, we'll have compassion for that. <laughs> that will come back. <laughs> yes, and I will post about it. <laughs> so in your opinion, why is daily movement so important to your overall wellness? Yeah, oh, so many reasons. And there's so many people locally and globally who have like nailed this into my head. Um, it's also a complicated question for an eating disorder survivor. So excited to get into it. For me, I think the primary fields that I work in are trauma and disordered eating recovery. And both of those so largely disembody us and disconnect us from like our physical sensations, how we relate to our body, even in space. Like um, if we can recognize our hunger and fullness cues, like if uh, getting our heart rate up feels safe even, or like if we can even, understand like oh that sensation in my toe is part of my body like some folks get really really disconnected so for me movement is very different from the concept of exercise it's just really like reconnecting to your physical body and making it a, almost like a safe container for your experiences and for your healing um i think if you do it every single day your healing definitely gets kind of I don't want to say fast track because it's like a very difficult thing to do, but yeah, kind of fast track. <laughs> yeah, because you're kind of paying attention to it every day. You're Absolutely. sitting with it for a little bit and like, you know, yeah. yeah. So and yeah, being in touch with the body through movement can be very overwhelming for folks who have been through trauma and eating disorders, but ultimately like this is your safe vessel. Like this vessel is your home and if you practice being in it as much as that can be so painful at first, like it definitely serves you well for the rest of your life. Yeah. It's like any skill that you try to pick up, right? Like riding a bike, you're going to fall off it several times and stuff like that. But eventually, you know, you're going to get it and you're going to be able to keep going and take off those training wheels and stuff like that. Like it's something like that or like a muscle or whatever. Like it's just something that you're exercising over time to try to form that yeah. habit and instead of like you know doing heavy workouts like would you suggest yoga and like what are some like easy what are like if i'm struggling right now what's an easy right. thing that i could do to start incorporating that i suppose yeah that's a perfect question um if you're really struggling right now especially struggling with like anxiety or panic i think like heavy workouts like hit workouts or intense cardio often like boost the heart rate up so high that it feels unmanageable for people. So I always recommend just like gentle stretching, maybe intuitive movement, like simple, put some music on, move around. Um, again, yoga. So that's a class Irene teaches with us. And it's not about getting your heart rate up or exercise. It's just about like stretching out those muscles um, for a long period of time and releasing the trauma that trauma and stress that gets stuck in our body physically. Um, there was one more thing I was going to say, a really kind of like accessible tool to start connecting to the body though, that doesn't require any movement, but does require tuning in would be what we call a body scan. And that's essentially going from toe to head and feeling like maybe tensing each muscle and releasing to just, recognize what's going on in my body or feel okay my tension or my trauma is really living here um so i would recommend that as a starter maybe i love that oh yeah. my gosh <laughs> okay so here's a question for you put you on the spot you wear many hats and you own a wellness-based business how do you take care of yourself throughout <laughs> the chaos of being a business owner your day-to-day -day life how do you take care of your own wellness sarah Amazing question. <laughs> <laughs> um, so <laughs> this is funny.
funny because I definitely ebb and flow or cycle into like doing an amazing job of taking care of myself and then fully dropping the ball. Yeah, so, like, what's up with that? I'm the same way. <laughs> Let's just normalize that. <laughs> Um, but the things that I'm trying to get really consistent on are allowing myself, first of all, to put work away at 5 or 6 p.m. I don't always do a great job of that, but the main self-care thing I'm trying to do is have a life outside of work. So have a work life, have an outside of work life, and what that's done for me is allow me to get like really excited when the work time comes again because I haven't let myself do it. Um, but in a bigger picture, what I do to take care of myself are largely movement-based things, like you were saying. So I do a lot of stretching and a lot of yoga on my own. I do a lot of, like, just laying in this room that I'm in right now with my maybe, like, Reiki or healing frequency music and doing my own body scans. But something that has been, like, undeniably the best thing for me has been dance. Um yeah, so I dance with the movement ball. I see <laughs> Sam just joined. <laughs> hey, girl, we've been talking about you. <laughs> yes, so I dance with the movement balls. Um, I dance with another friend of mine, Shelby, so she's out of my shell. Um, and I, you know, I dance my whole life, too, and I find that that's something that really, really grounds me in, like, Sarah Mackie as a person, not Sarah Mackie as a business owner, Sarah Mackie as a therapist. It's just, like, my time and I would say if you can find anything like that to do as self-care that's like that's the ticket yeah, <laughs> so, that's know, beautiful. I do that. and the community and side of it and everything too and like it really yeah, like, yeah. and like yeah, I said like community. you were the bright light there <laughs> that was welcoming everybody and stuff so you're really in yourself when you're there <laughs> I've seen that Thank side you. of you <laughs> yeah I'm really excited when I'm there sure. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah that's true um, just like one more thing, I definitely try to get enough sleep. Sleep is super important to me as a very sensitive little nervous system. Um, and I, tr especially in eating disorder recovery, I try to make sure I'm hitting all of my meals, um, which is important for everybody, but seems to kind of go by the wayside sometimes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, that's, that's good advice. And here's my last little question, and it might be a tear uh, jerking one. <laughs> <laughs> what's been the most rewarding part of starting your practice and watching it grow so is it how you've impacted the lives of the people that come in every day is it the growth that you've seen is it the growth within yourself and your own healing like what's what's the good here <laughs> yeah that's a beautiful question um uh, and a hard one because there's so many parts I could answer, like, um, what are the million good things and what are the million challenging things, but the most rewarding thing uh, um, for me in my practice, I think, would have to come down to, like, the result, results or, like, what I experience in my one-on-one -on -one work with my clients, so... I believe so strongly in trauma-informed therapy, and I believe so strongly in, like, interventions that help us navigate our nervous systems, and just to have worked with clients who, like, a year later, they're telling me, like, no, no, like, I'm good, like, that, that was it for me, that worked for me, like, thank you so much, or I'm getting any positive feedback, like, those are the days I come home, like, happy crying, everything feels worth it, like, the business stuff, um, and like kind of second to that would be watching my staff kind of come into themselves and get the chance to have those experiences as well. Like we're such a, I would say we're such a strong staff in terms of we're all always encouraging each other, like our biggest cheerleaders. And yeah, that's been really, really cool to watch them have those experiences too. That's so beautiful. And what about yourself on your own journey? How has this helped you heal and your own process? Well, um, I would say a huge part of my personal healing has been like taking the trainings I've taken to help others heal, for example. Um, but also like watching the interventions that help me help others. I'm like relearning and almost like 
compounding my healing lessons when I'm working through this with other people as well. I try to keep myself out of it, but there's always that like residual, like, oh yeah, this works. Like I'm feeling good. I'm growing through the experiences of others. And I think that's okay. <laughs> yes, a hundred percent. That's so beautiful. Oh my gosh. Well, that's the end of my questions. This was an absolutely beautiful chat. Thank you so much for taking the time to sit with me this morning to let me get to know you a little bit better and to kind of share your journey and the journey of everybody around you. It's so lovely that you you found a niche and a gap in the market here in Fredericton and you're fulfilling it. As someone who has struggled with their own mental illness since they were also a teenager, like I have gone to try to find help. I've gone to different counseling sessions and they don't specialize in things like trauma. So it's hard to get what you're seeking um, from them. So I think it's really beautiful what you're doing. I'm so happy that it's going well for you and that so many people are getting the help that they need because of you and the little ray of sunshine that you brought into Fredericton. <laughs> so much, Ashley. Thank you for having me. I think what you're doing is awesome. And I'm always looking forward to seeing the founders that you're bringing in on this. And it just humanizes the whole experience of having a business. That's it, right? And I think it's just, it's so much fun to talk to people. So one of my jobs was actually a bank teller. I was a business bank teller for years. And my job was to take in the money of all the business owners in Fredericton, and they would come in and make their deposits. And I would talk to them one-on-one -on -one about their businesses. So whether right. it's construction or therapy or they were a lawyer or whatever it may be. So this is kind of like me taking that experience and making it into like a I podcast, that. I guess. I'm like, now yeah. I want to like reach out to the business owners I'm really interested in and like figure out what your journeys are. And maybe somebody listening wants to start their own practice someday and you've helped inspire that. Like that's such a beautiful thing to be a part of. So thank you for sharing your story. I really appreciate oh it. Absolutely. Thank you. <laughs> okay, guys. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for leaving little comments and everything too. Next week, we have another special guest coming up, another local entrepreneur who's fabulous. If you tuned in late, you want to see the whole thing, the replay will be on this account here, and it's also going to be up on YouTube. And that's it. That's the show. <laughs> thank you, Sarah. You have a great rest of your day. Thank you so much. Talk soon. <laughs> Bye.